In this movie, we're going to discuss grids and layout options. Now, we've already learned how to default what kind of design grid and layout that we'd like to see, but we really didn't see them in practice. So we're going to pick up with Report 2. This is a report that points to the Revenue and Office table and show you what they do. As a quick review, let's go to File, Options. Make sure you're on the Layout tab. Here is where we chose in our design view to see rulers, guidelines, tooltips, and show hidden sections. Now we're going to explore what those can do for us. First, let's choose Grid. And then let's determine our grid size, and we'll call it quarter of an inch, 0.25. We're going to go ahead and leave it as a Snap to Grid, and we're going to press OK. If you'll notice carefully, you'll now see a series of dots that are exactly one quarter inch apart, and they're what's known as a Snap to Grid meaning as I drag my fields over, they're going to line up with the closest grid either to the right or to the left, as well as vertically and horizontally. If I try and pull it down, it'll line it up with the bottom line here. Now, if I go back to my file menu and I say Options, and I say take off the Snap to Grid, and take off the grid, and press OK, now I can move my fields shades of gray to wherever I like. Now keep in mind I still have my guidelines which are a little bit different than my grid. The grid is defined by crystal as points plotted out in exact geometric order. My guidelines however by simply clicking up on the ruler I can create on a whim or remove on a whim both vertically and horizontally. Once a field has been lined up on one of these grid lines I no longer actually physically have to click on the field but I can click on the guideline and move it up or even move it over. A lot of this is going to depend on how you'd like to work. I think these guidelines really help, especially since they line everything up perfectly, both horizontally and vertically. This comes in really handy when you're exporting, especially to the infamous Excel. I've once been told that exporting to Excel cleanly from Crystal was an impossibility. However, with a little bit of patience, I found not only can it export perfectly, but saves a lot of time in the long run. Going back to our options, File, Options. You can choose to see these rulers and guidelines wherever you see fit. Now let's talk about Show Hidden Sections. Notice how that box is checked. That means in my design view, even if I've suppressed or hidden F section, which we're going to do in a second, it'll still show up for me, albeit grayed out. Watch what happens. If I just press OK, and I come down here, and I say, hmm, I really don't want to see group 3, or group footer 3 I should say, and I can say hide. Notice how it's kind of grayed out and I no longer see it. Now if I go to file and I go back to my options and I say take off the show hidden sections button and press OK, notice how they kind of hide out of the way. A lot of it depends on how you want to work. I find it's helpful to see all sections even if I'm hiding them because the group still has an effect on the order and the summarizing of my report. Now another thing to note is why Crystal does put some default guidelines in there for you, that's exactly what they are. They're defaulted. They're not really user defined. It's Crystal has its method and it basically lines up the field about how many fields to choose by the page width and then tries to fit it all in. Some fields obviously, especially name fields, will be much longer than, you know, a code or an office field or a revenue amount field. Crystal will also default line up the left hand side of each object. If you notice here is my field heading object and it's lined up here. There's my summary and it is lined up there. Now you can change that at any time. I can click on it and drag it and now it's lined up with the right. It really depends on the layout. I can also line up both at the same time by highlighting the field and dragging the box over. You may not have noticed it, but the Snap to Grid comes in handy on those guidelines, which means that I don't have to spend my time with the mouse lining it up exactly, but instead I can just drag it close and it'll snap into place with the guideline. If I wish to break that, I can manually by simply dragging it out. How I get close to the line, it snaps back. But if you're not too close, you can put it just outside. Again, a lot of this is going to depend on how you feel you need the report to show up. I like using guidelines myself, it makes my job easier, and then when it comes time to export, it's very clean. I also recommend that in your options, you show your hidden sections, because again, even though you may not see them or you may have suppressed them, they do have an effect on the order 
and it never hurts sometimes. You do need to see them. Notice the grid options are different from the guidelines. The guidelines are always snap to, meaning if you get within a certain range, which I believe is close to one eighth of an inch, it will snap to that line and line up automatically. The snap to grid is separate and apart from your grid lines, and they kind of work in conjunction. They can both snap to the grid you have created or defined here, as well as snap to the guidelines. The problem is, you need to choose one or the other. If you're using a snap to grid, don't use guidelines. If you're going to use guidelines, try not to use a snap to grid unless they line up exactly right. That might save you a little bit of headache down the line. Oh, and don't worry if you do choose to use a grid or your guidelines, they won't show on your export to PDF, Excel, or Word, or any other formats available to you.